Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at laser dazzlers, which are an extension of typical laser weapons. And they're kind of fun to play with, and they have a couple limitations, but in general they're really, really, really effective if employed properly. So let's get started. So what we have here is a pretty straightforward scenario. We're sitting down here in the coast. We have ourselves uh, one of these little Humvees, and uh, what I've done is I've removed the um, regular laser on board, which is a little bit too powerful for us, and I've replaced it with just a straight up laser dazzler tool. Now the laser dazzlers uh, have a couple different capabilities, and uh, we're gonna take a look at each one of those in turn. Uh, the first thing is, is their target selection. And uh, one of the cool things about laser dazzlers is they can target both ships as well as aircraft. Now the aircraft gets a little more interesting, which is why we're gonna start by targeting a ship first. So one of the things I can see here is I've got myself a little skunk guy. Uh, he's making my way towards me. I'm going to press F1, go ahead and click on him real quickly. You can see my little Humvee is going to drive up to the coast there and pop up on the beach. He's going to fire it up and he's going to start dazzling. And uh, you can see that's a pretty intense beam there. Now, the big thing you need to know about laser dazzlers in command is that they don't damage the unit. What they do is they damage the unit's Mark I eyeball. So if I swing over here real quickly and actually click on my OSA K, uh, one of the things you'll notice here is uh, under damage control, uh, you know, the ship itself is fine. There's no, it's not, I'm not sinking. But what you'll see is that my Mark I eyeball has been damaged. It hasn't been destroyed. Uh, basically, uh, we're running downstairs quickly and uh, grabbing ourselves some new eyeballs and installing them to all the crew members. Now, it's worth noting, if I get close enough with this Dazzler, I could potentially destroy all the eyeballs on board this vessel and you would no longer have control of it. Speaking of lack of control, watch what happens when we dazzle something else. So I notice here we have an aircraft approaching us. It's a MiG-25P. I'm going to go ahead and press F1, go ahead and click on him. Now, aircraft are a little bit more challenging to dazzle. Uh, the first problem you're going to have is distance. Uh, since we have a 10 nautical mile range here, as our aircraft does get into range, uh, we're also going to be blasting the bottom of that particular target. So, you know, as I'm starting to dazzle here, it's uh, not that I'm going to miss. Uh, trust me, you won't have any issues missing here. As a matter of fact, if I look here, um, apparently I missed. <laughs> what are you aiming at then? Uh, you'll notice here that we're attacking with a base percent to hit. It's a range issue. And of course, uh, we hit them over here. Now, if I jump over to my MiG-25 real quickly and actually take look at them, you will notice something new appeared. It says lost control. And the reason it lost control, of course, is if I click on this unit, you will observe that for a moment there, he was so blind, he couldn't actually control his aircraft. Uh, the other thing that makes this more challenging, of course, other than distance is angle. Uh, right now, even though we've got some control of this particular aircraft, uh, we're shooting at the bottom of it, which makes it much, much harder to actually hit the pilot who's currently operating it, <laughs> who's probably getting a little bit miserable here. But as you can see under damage, um, again, we're going to be losing those eyeballs and uh, that's where the real damage is going to start. So our MiG-25 here has lost control. He probably uh, went completely blind here and you'll notice he's doing this weird little death spiral towards the ground. Um, the other thing you probably observed is our little helicopter down here also did this weird little death spiral towards the ground and basically smacked directly into the ground. Now when they lose control they're programmed to automatically slowly spiral down. I'm actually going to order him to keep uh, working over the other target. You can always uh, press U for unassigned. You can press F1 to go ahead and select something else. Keep dazzling the boat. Keep dazzling the boat. And our poor MiG-25 here is absolutely unable to do anything. Oh, he's spiraling 8,007, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1,900 feet. Sploosh! You know, one of the interesting things here is uh, you can see he was dazzled. <laughs> I feel like somebody's having way too much fun with this. But of course, uh, he just went swimming. And uh, that worked very, very effectively because, again, we didn't have to discharge any fancy ammunition. We just basically blinded the pilot. Now, things get interesting when we get to UAVs. As you know, a UAV, of course, uh, does not have eyeballs. It just has sensors. So what I'm going to do is uh, speed up time a little bit here. And there goes our truck uh, attacking the sensors on board of our UAV. Now, if I click on my UAV here, uh, you'll notice that it's just kind of trucking along, just relaxing, it's getting dazzled. Now, we can see there's a little bit of damage. Now, the damage here is going to be to the TV cameras and all those sort of instruments built onto it. Notice that we don't have an eyeball here, so we don't have to worry about blinding that. But the key thing here is uh, the gain on the TV would have to be turned down quite substantially. But you'll notice that no matter how much we blast this thing right in the face, it doesn't really seem to be kind of putting it down because of the fact that those TV cameras have all sorts of safety tools. Are they being damaged? Yeah, they're absolutely being damaged, but if we were to drop a bomb right now, my little Humvee would have gotten hammered for it. It's kind of an idea like that. So going back to the other team again, uh, do we have any laser left? Yeah, we have plenty of laser left. And I'll order him to uh, renew his efforts on our good friend over here. Uh, Shift F1, go ahead and click on him right here. We can do this. Uh, we'll allocate all of them. Why not? Fire. Let's see if we can do enough damage to cause our boat to lose control here. <laughs> and again, our boat crew is like, um, can we do something about this? This is getting kind of irritating. 
yeah, just kind of getting blasted. You'll notice every once in a while because they are a boat. Uh, we do take enough damage to actually go completely blind. And then, of course, uh, we gain our eyeballs back as we go find somebody else's eyeballs below deck there. And he's just looking right into that laser. <laughs> Keep in mind, uh, if we were trying to attack him, ah, that worked. Uh, now you'll notice here that the eyeball is destroyed. Nice. That took quite a bit. But again, uh, we don't normally shoot major warships with tools like this. Uh, usually what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be concentrating our efforts on, you know, much, much smaller ships that, you know, basically try to attack like cruise ships and things like that. Uh, one of the interesting things, though, is uh, let me go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. Look at that, just blast in the face. You'll notice, even though he has no more eyeballs, he still has the ability to safely operate. Um, it's not like the airplane that we just watched or the helicopter we just watched. It just spiraled downwards and just kind of went down. So it's kind of an important concept. Now, I know what you're thinking now. You're saying, okay, that's uh, pretty darn effective. Um, I like that a lot. Uh, but is there anything that can neutralize them? And uh, the answer is yes. And uh, we'll go ahead and demonstrate that real quickly here. Let's get a Cessna 172. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, my friend. This is uh, not going to go well for you, but uh, this is for science. So I'm going to go ahead and click over there. I'm going to go ahead and set his altitude to a much more reasonable Cessna 172 altitude of 5,500 feet, especially since we're traveling to the east there. Go switch back over to my laser unit. And what we're going to do is that we're going to unpause real quickly. He's still shooting him. Leave him alone. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab myself some weather. And again, the weather is going to be the key thing that's going to make this uh, not as effective. So let's see here. I've got myself, uh, let's see here. Uh, it's a clear sky. I don't know why we have, oh, I did wind state. My bad. I meant to do this one. Uh, let's see here. Middle cloud, 7,000. We actually got a razor Cessna up a little bit higher there. Otherwise, he's going to be right back in the line of fire again. Uh, let's go up to, I'll uh, we'll do uh, 7,500 feet here. That's perfectly fine. Quit unpause here. Let me go switch back to my little laser dazzler buddy here. Keep in mind, there are now clouds present in the air around us. So our little Humvee here is looking at that guy. We're going to shift F1. We're going to get yelled at because we're out of range here. Oh, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and click on that one. Keep in mind, our Cessna is detectable because of my radar. It is not detectable because of my flare or anything like that. Also, I've gone through half of my laser already. <laughs> it's just annoying that Oza. All right, let's see. So we're now in horizontal range. I'll go ahead and click on this one. And you'll notice here, I no longer have visual line of sight to the target. Uh, because I don't have that line of sight, I'm not able to actually engage the target. I can't just fire the laser up through the clouds. Um, that technology for dazzling doesn't exist. For conventional lasers, you can just go for it and hope you burn up the cloud as the laser bolt actually hits. It's a very beautiful image. If you've never seen a laser literally cut through a cloud, it's it's pretty satisfying. But the key thing here is uh, we now have found immunity, basically, by avoiding line of sight or staying outside of that 10 nautical mile range. Enjoy.